Oh, hello. <laughs> hello guys, it's me Zane and while other parts of YouTube and other parts of my life are straight up on fire, I decided let's have a chill repot and a chill discussion -y, tutorial -y, informative e video today about terrestrial and semi-terrestrial orchids, because why not? I have a job to do with them, so let's make a video out of it anyways. If you want to know more about orchids or anything, other plants, succulents, whatever, check out my other videos and you might find something interesting there. Also, you can subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram. You might find there the interesting stuff. Now let's get to do some work here because, because I'm already regretting this video. This is going to take a long time. Yes. Oh. Okay, today I decided to talk about terrestrials and semi-terrestrial, semi, semi, semi-terrestrial orchids and, and, and this stuff. Because I have a few. Basically, most of the orchids which you can get in flower shops and these garden centers are epiphytic, meaning they are living attached to tree trunks and branches and rocks sometimes. Well, those are little fights, but it's the same idea basically. Well, they are getting their nutrients and stuff from that environment up in the air. But there are some orchids which are a little bit different. These are the semi-terrestrials and the terrestrials. And these orchids are living actually in soil level and ground level, let's say. These can be still different than any other house plants because they are not living like straight up in mud or whatever. They are actually living in these leaf litter and this kind of stuff which is still airy and well somewhat aerated and not as dense as straight up soil and if you're talking about these terrestrials and semi-terrestrials well, well there are a lot of actually a lot of orchid species and um, a lot of genera like cymbidiums, zygopetalums, habanarias, pleiones, Paphiopedilums, Cypripediums, there are a lot of these orchids which can be terrestrial or semi-terrestrial. I'm talking about these two, actually, two terms, like terrestrials and semi-terrestrials, but if we are talking about this category of orchids, which is like not epiphytic, this is the same as gender and sexuality and whatever. This is a spectrum. So we can have two terrestrial orchids, but both of them will have different soil recommendations on the internet and potting mix recipes on the internet and different needs because they, they are coming from different environments and they are not living in the same type of soil on the ground. Today I thought I'm gonna show you this spectrum while repotting them also. So yay, great video idea, good for me I guess. <laughs> So here's my recipe because I don't want to forget how to actually repot these orchids. And this is my drink. Now, if we're talking about this spectrum, let's start on the rather epiphytic end of the semi-terrestrial and terrestrial spectrum. So therefore, let's start with two of my orchids. This is my Ancestrochylus rochildianus, and if I, I searched a lot on the internet, I researched a lot basically, and I found that they are kind of epiphytic, but they are kind of semi-terrestrial, because some sources say that they are epiphytic, some sources say that they are semi-terrestrial. I try to look at how these plants actually grow in nature. So therefore I uh, typed in the name of this orchid and after that I wrote in situ because that means that you will find pictures of the orchids in the wild where they naturally grow. And the only image that basically came up was uh, this orchid living on a tree branch. So it was purely just epiphytic. Also, I searched for some potting mixes and how different people grow this orchid and I've seen that rather those people had success with it who used a rather a semi-terrestrial soil. I have two of these because I just bought two of them. I don't know why. I Literally, I don't remember purchasing one of them at this point. I straight up put them into ceramics. So I thought, oh, it's gonna be perfect, but it's not. <laughs> so I decided to repot both of these orchids into the same pot because 
you know, why not? And right now they are looking this shitty because they are dormant and they are not growing any new stuff. They are a little bit out of season. I think they are catching up right now. Both of them are dormant right now and both of them should grow soon, whatever. So I'm gonna remove both of them from the ceramics and it, sh it should be pretty easy because I don't think they have an extensive root system right now. Okay, no, that's not a lot of roots. Actually, two roots are alive, I'm gonna cut the other ones and I think these roots are burned, which are alive. I mean, the tips are burned. And let's see the other one, this should be really bad, okay, it is. What you can see here, this leafy stuff, this was in this year's new growth, but as I touch it, it just comes apart and it rotted away, so I can just pull it off. I'm gonna repot this Ancestral Kairos Rocholianus into this tiny container because I feel that would be beneficial right now. But first I need my scissors because I need to cut the dead roots. Don't forget at this point, I'm just gonna mention this in every video I think, that if you're using scissors, sterilize them always between orchids, sterilizing. Before doing something, sterilizing. Sterilize it every time. Right now I'm just gonna Remove the dead roots. Oh shit, these are dead. Now, if this was a bigger pot and if this was a plastic pot, that would mean that a bigger part, a bigger pot can hold on to a lot of moisture and also it's plastic, it won't like breathe. But in the case of this clay pot being small, holding on to a small amount of moisture and also breathing a lot through this porous material, I will opt for something which is kind of a epiphytic semi-terrestrial mix, but also it gives a bigger amount of moisture just because it is small. So I'm gonna try to do that, we'll see what's gonna happen. There are four different types of medium today which I'm gonna use and mix in different ratios and these are small bark chips, sphagnum moss, perlite and cocoa core. Let's try to do some shit. So on the bottom as I do that, I'm gonna place some sphagnum moss because I like to do that if there is a tray underneath the pot and if there is moisture there, the moss can actually wick it up so there's gonna be like no moisture left in the tray, meaning my orchid won't have wet feet. But just a little amount because this is a tiny pot. Some perlite for aeration. Actually, I'm not gonna measure ratios here because one, I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> which is really good for a tutorial video. <laughs> I'm gonna use just the tiniest amount of coco core. Well, I cannot place this into the pot while, re while uh, placing the medium inside because this one does not have roots, but this one has. So I'm just gonna place it there and try and I'm gonna try to repot it as I go. As a top layer, I'm gonna use sphagnum moss. Okay, so here is my finished product. This is my Ancestor Chilis Rochelianus repotted into a semi-terrestrial mix. Now, I used mostly sphagnum moss and bark chips, small bark chips, but because this pot is really tiny and it's made out of clay, which means it will like dry up super fast, like mostly in the summertime, and I want more moisture there, I put their coconut core and also some perlite for more aeration. So this is the first on our spectrum, a really epiphytic terrestrial mix, but with a twist for some more moisture inside the pot. I'm not gonna clean up this mess because it's really not a big mess. Now the second contestant here are my puffy pedalums. Well, this puffy pedalum is, is this typical modern leaf puffy pedalum which you can find from time to time in these bigger garden centers or even sometimes in like lover shops and stuff. So yeah, this is a pretty popular hybrid. It was like made for the home and for any environment. This one is doing really good in this environment. It's growing rather fast, which is like a rare thing with puffy pedalons. So I'm not gonna repot this one because this is an inorganic type of medium and I'm just testing this out, I'm just experimenting with it. But with this one, I repotted this one a long time ago and it's due. Repot is really due right now. 
So the Puffyopedums are our next thing on the spectrum. We are going from being really epiphytic to the semi-terrestrial semi category. And the Puffyopedums are semi-terrestrially, terrestrially kind of plants. This one was potted into sphagnum moss and bark chips. When I repotted it, we're gonna remove this plant from this pot. I, I'm trying to be gentle with the root system and also with the pot because I want to reuse this pot since, you know, there is like no need for a new pot. I can smell some decomposing medium and stuff but the root system is really good I can see some growing root tips I can see pretty good stuff happening with it right now I will try to remove the medium from the root system but I'm not gonna be doing a perfect job because you know uh, I can actually pull off this repotting if I don't remove like every single piece of bark chip or sphagnum moss from this root system right now. Well now I already can see some roots which tried to grow but the environment was too dry around the base of these plants because it really looks like it was trying to outgrow from these pots so you know there was like no more medium around the base of the plants. Actually, in the case of this Puffyopedilum, you can not distinguish the roots which are alive and which are dead really easily. Usually these darker brown or roots are dead already and I can cut them away. Now, I think I removed everything which I could and this is the root system right now. Here is the pot. I did not wash out this pot perfectly because everything what I wanted to do with this plant is just basically change the majority of the medium but nothing else because it was just decomposing. There were no pests and no problems with this orchid so far, which is great, you know. Since this pot is bigger, it can hold on to more moisture, but this plant has a bigger root system and a lot of leaves, which consume a lot of water. So therefore, I'm gonna make a mix which is rather on the more terrestrially side than rather on the semi-terrestrially side. So I'm gonna start again with sphagnum moss as a bottom layer. I'm not gonna compact it, but I'm making sure that the sphagnum moss will just go there into every corner, every bottom corner of this pot. A little perlite. I'm just winging these mixes. I'm not doing like really scientific measurements and stuff. I need to put the orchid there in first. <laughs> and now I can fill it up. And guess what? Synthic saves the day. So as I'm pulling on this knot, the whole plant is actually coming more together. Okay, so this is my repotted puffy opedilum. It's done. It was harder than I thought it would be, but it can go back to its place. Now I can put back this puffy on here as a decoration piece. And this is the last and third orchid today, which we're going to repot. This is really on the really terrestrial end of things. And I think, that, well, this is my Ludicia this color, and I really like the leaves. As much as I hated this plant, I love it that much right now. Well, the watering situation in this type of soil was not the greatest, so there are some pieces which are basically dead now, but that's okay, I'm gonna repot it and it's going to be just fine. Now, this is really on the terrestrial end of things. No epiphytic 
things going on at all. No epiphytic thoughts are in the mind of this orchid right now. And because of that, I think if I would only put this into a like all-purpose gardening soil, this plant would be just fine, in my opinion. But we're not gonna do that. <laughs> and let's remove this orchid from its pot. Now, this is a loose part. Well, again, I'm not gonna bother with it like too much. You know, this soil was great for it. It will be great for it in the future as well, if a small amount will be left on the roots. And this, oh, where is the root system? I mean, what is this? This will grow fast once it like has a decent root system. So I think I'm gonna use this bigger clay pot. Why clay? I don't have any other pot right now. So again, I'm gonna start with sphagnum moss as a wicking agent there and this time, since it's a clay pot, I'm gonna use actually more of this coconut coir. It's more dense, this orchid I think will need that in this type of setup and you know this soil was dense already so I don't think it's going to be a too much of a problem. So right now this pot looks like this. I'm just gonna stick these into the pots and I hope this tiny amount of root system which is like present here will save the day. But at this point I'm not really sure. I decided to fill up the pot first and pot the orchids afterwards inside because you know, these are basically just these sticks and I can stick them into the pots. And I'm trying to not compact the soil but I'm just compacting it a tiny little bit around these stems and I'm lining them up in opposite directions so they can grow in every angle. I'm just gonna fill up the pot and call it a day. Okay, so this is my Ludicia discolor repotted on the terrestrial end of things. As you can see that, since we are on the terrestrial end of things, I used quite a lot of coconut core. So I'm gonna clean up the things and come back. And it started to rain outside again. Today, the day was really weird and I see that the lightning is not the same right now in this video. Well, that's a shame, whatever. So today we repotted these three terrestrial-ish orchids so yeah that was my video for today and before the rain is going to be just really loud to handle i'm gonna like sign out so this is my video for today and i hope you liked it click on the like button subscribe to my channel well follow me on instagram and see you next time bye guys